Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today I'm going to show you how to install LED reverse lights for your car or your truck. I want reverse lights so I'm on the trail and I need to back down a trail. I could see very clearly. Now I'm using the Baja Design Squadron XL LED lights. So this is where I want to set up my lights on the rear bumper, facing out just a little bit. It'll give me really good backup lighting. So I showed you the setup, now let's go see what I'm going to use for the install. The battery is in the front driver's side of my truck and these lights are in the rear so I'm running 14 gauge stranded wire to limit the voltage drop over the estimated 15 feet of wire that I'll need. I'm using this plastic flex tubing that'll protect the wires so that they don't get frayed or damaged. I have an inline fuse, some connectors, electrical connectors, eyelets, and don't forget your relay. In this I'll show you how to wire a relay. It's really simple, there's no complexities. I'll go over it briefly. And I'll make another video that'll go more into depth on why you should use a relay and also how a relay works and stuff. Now when you're dealing with wiring lights, make sure you draw out a diagram. This is going to be super helpful. So here's the front of my truck, there's the two headlights, there's the windshield, and then here's the bed and the rear of my truck. Those red lights are the Baja Design lights that I'm putting in. The goal is to have the stock reverse light trigger the relay and turn on the Squadron XL lights. To understand how to wire these lights, you need to have a basic idea how to wire a relay. So here's a relay. Think of a relay as a switch. So the first part is to get the power to the switch from the battery. This line has a 10 amp inline fuse to protect the circuit and this will power the Squadron XL lights. But this switch has to be turned on and off. And the way you turn the relay on, you have to power it with some type of electrical current. In this case, we're using the electric that's powering the reverse lights. So when we put the truck in reverse, it'll turn the relay on and allow the battery power to go to the Squadron XL lights. To finish it off, you need to ground both the relay and the lights to complete the circuit. Typically a relay is powered by the number 30 connector, but for some reason the instructions say to do differently on this relay, so I'll follow the instructions and power the number 87 post. So let's start by finding the power to the reverse light, which will trigger the relay. To get the tail light assembly off, all we need to do is there's four screws, one here, one here, one here, and one there. Take those out and this will come right out. So the reverse light's built in, it's at the top, we look here. Reverse lights right here at the top. Be careful with these clips. They're very easy to snap. Unplug it, and we can see we have two prongs in here. So one's a ground, one's a power. To figure out which one's which, we just go back here and we look, and you can see the black with the red in it is the power, and the straight black is the ground. So you can see the truck is in reverse. I have the emergency brake on, the engine's off. I just have it in the run position. You can see the red and black wire is right there. I'm going to just get my red connector for the multimeter and put it in the prong right there. I'm going to touch my black against a ground and you can see that jumps up to 11 volts. So like I said that red and black wire is our power and that straight black wire is the ground. So we're going to just follow this all the way up to here and we're going to open up this wire loom just a little bit so we have our two wires. Now that we have our two wires exposed, we could get a wire stripper and expose just a little piece in here that we're going to solder a wire to. Remember, anytime you're working on your electrical system, it's very important to disconnect the negative terminal. Loosen that bolt there, wiggle that off, our black ground is off, now we can start our electrical work. So for any power lines, I like using red, for any grounds, I like using black, so I try to stick with that as I wire. And I'm going to get my wire stripper in here. And remember, you can only do this once, so make sure you do it right. You have it in the right spot and you have the correct wire. And just do that, press, and pull it open. So I'm going to get a waterproof relay so that I can mount this somewhere it's able to get wet. And where I'm going to mount it is right back there. Now is a good time to know where you want to mount your relay because you're going to have to start running wires and you want to cut the wires to the correct length. So we're going to go here, we're going to go through there. So there's the hole that I said we're running it through. We're under the bumper now. We're going to run it through that hole out over here to the factory wiring harness for the towing package. And I'm going to put the relay right up in here because there's plenty of places that we could just keep the relay. All the wires will be together. So now that we know where the relay is going to be, we could cut our wiring that we're going to wire up to here. So we have our stripped reverse wire here. And we're going to take our wire that's going to power the relay and we just put it right up against it. And I'm going to twist it around. Whenever you're soldering, you keep the heat on the actual piece that you're soldering, and then you add the solder. I'm not the greatest solderer, so if I could do this, you could definitely do this. So now we just get some black tape, tape up the soldered area that we did. Let's go put the wires back in this protective plastic. Tape this up nice and neat. 
Okay, and that looks just like it did from the factory, which is great. So now we can just get our connector, connect it back onto our reverse light here. So now we have our length of wire here that's going to the relay, and we have the tube to protect the wire. I'm just going to put the tube on the wire. Now the good thing about having this on here is now you can just run it wherever you want. You don't have to worry about chafing. So I'm going to run that right down. Everything's attached in the light. Just get this back into place, get our screws in, tail lights in there good. So now let's crimp our connector that's going to the relay. Crimp down, then we slide our cover over it and boom, looks good. So I went out and got this 40 amp relay. It has a little connector that we could easily connect to some spot on the frame. And you can see if you look around the edges it's kind of reflective. That's because this is a little more watertight than one that just goes under the hood. So we're down underneath the truck again, right where we're going to put our relay near all these harnesses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a wire tie, and I'm going to just wire tie it to the top wiring harness in there. Just tighten that down, and that fits in right there, which is actually really nice. Right next to all the factory wiring, it looks like it's meant to be there. We're going to run our 14 gauge red power wire from the battery in the front to the relay in the rear. So I'm under the truck, that way it's facing rear, and you can see here's the factory harness and it kind of runs up and follows the frame rail here. You can see it back there. Here's the gas tank, here's the frame rail. You can still see it's still riding the frame rail right there. And then it goes up into here, into the cab. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep running it, kind of following that fuel line. And then right here, I'm going to switch it over, put it through here, switch it over, follow the emergency brake up, And then this will go right into the engine compartment. That's where it'll come up. And then I'll run it back here, right to my battery. And that's how I'm going to run it. So right along the frame rail. So now I'm going to start the process of putting all this wire into this plastic tubing to protect it. So now we have the wiring all lined up where it's supposed to go. And now we're going to go underneath and tuck the wires away. So it only took a few seconds to really wire this through. You can see it's going through right there. And then on the other side of the frame rail, comes out. So I'm going to go around the body mount. And now from here, I'm going to try to run it right up through there. So I'm going to keep shoving that wire up until it comes up through here. Okay. Now we'll attach an inline fuse to this line. So we have our fuse holder. Each light is 3.6 amps, so that's 7.2 amps total. So I'm going to run a 10 amp fuse and the ends on this come spliced. Now we have these waterproof butt connectors. That's what we're going to use. So this is what it's going to look like after we connect the inline fuse to the power line. You can see we use two butt connectors here. The butt connectors are crimp on and then they heat shrink right on to make it a waterproof connection. So we have a butt connector here. Then we have our 10 amp inline fuse. Then we have another butt connector that we crimp on and use a heat gun to heat shrink. And then we run this all the way to our positive terminal on the battery where there's an eyelet and that eyelet gets crimped on and then connected. We're just going to leave this disconnected for now. This will be the last thing that will go on. Now we're going to go to the back of the truck and we'll cut the wire at the end of the plastic tube. And then we'll crimp on a connector and connect it to the relay. So we have our relay right here is 30 and this is going to our Baja design lights so we haven't done that yet. But on the other side of the 30 is the 87. That's the power line running from the battery all the way back here. Which is this one right here. So I'm just going to connect that force that all the way down. So 85 is right here, 86 is right here. 86 gets the power from the reverse light. That's what triggers the relay. Make sure that gets forced all the way down. Good. Now 85 is going to get the ground. So we'll do that next. So when looking for a ground, we want to find an unpainted surface. If the surface is painted, you can just get a little sandpaper and scrape it off. You can see here's the ground wire coming from the factory towing package. So we'll just connect our eyelet to this ground right here. And then we just have to run a ground wire from here to right there. So we're just going to disconnect this ground wire here. Remember to reconnect this when we're done. And we're going to get some sandpaper and we're just going to sand this surface back here. We just want to make sure that this surface has no paint on it and it's nice and clean for a good ground. So the ground wire doesn't have to be long. You can see I got about a foot, foot and a half of wire. Both of the ends are stripped off. The ground wire is going to be attached to this bolt here, so let's make sure the eyelet fits, and it does. So we're going to have an eyelet go on one side, 
and on the other side we're connecting it to the relay so we want one of these connectors and that's what it's going to look like and for the ground wire I'm running a 14 gauge black wire so let's crimp on this eyelet good that's on there nice and tight not going anywhere crimp this on so now our ground wire is done let's go install it so we'll put our old bolt back in it's nice and sanded has a good contact we'll add our washer we'll add our old ground wire and now we'll add the ground wire we just made for our relay and then we'll get our nut and only hand tighten it down for now so we have two prongs left on our relay we have the 85 which is our ground and we have the 87 which is going to go to our lights so let's connect the 85 to the ground make sure that goes all the way down good and now let's go wire our lights now the great thing about this kit is it comes with these connectors and I'm going to show you how you wire that right now. So let's go into the truck and see what we need to get done. Okay, so I have my light pretty much where it's going to be. It's still loose. I'll probably tighten it down next. And I have the wire running up and over here. And you can see this is the factory wiring harness and those connectors they give us will connect right up to this and keep this whole thing waterproof, which is awesome. So remember, we have two lights. We have that one and we have this one over here. And this one, same deal. The wire is running up and over here. So I'm finishing up on one connector. I'll show you how to do the other connector. So this is pretty much the basic setup of what needs to get done. The wire at the end gets crimped on the plastic and then you crimp these two right there and there onto the copper and the copper ends right about there. It could go in just a little bit and that's fine. And then you just slide these rubber pieces on and then all that gets done is you go and you just push it in and let's see if you could hear this. It actually clicks. So you push it in, and it clicked right there, and now it's held in. And then you just take this, and then you bend it over, and then it'll click in right here, just like that. And now you have your own waterproof wiring harness. Actually, one second, got to put this green thing on, and now we have a waterproof connection. How awesome is that? So here's the wiring diagram that comes with it. You can see there's A, B, and C. There's A, B, and C, so it correlates with this diagram here. So the A is your ground. This is the ground that you're going to be using. B is your power, and you can see here's the switch. Don't worry about the switch because we're running it a little bit differently. But it goes to your power. And now the cool thing about these lights is C. C is another ground. You can add a toggle switch to complete the circuit to that ground, and if you do that, you could dim the lights 50%. We're not going to use this feature right now, but in case I do use it in the future, I'm going to put the wire here anyhow, but tape it off so it doesn't work. So here's our setup, black ground red power and this little black thinner wire is going to be a ground for that switch if you ever want to install it later now let me show you how you actually connect the wires to this switch so you just want to measure out enough so that the end of the copper goes right up against this part here and when you crimp this down it'll crimp down right onto the rubber now i'm sure there's a special crimp tool for this i don't have it so i'm just using a regular pliers you just need to fold the pair of metal tabs down onto the copper and crimp it in tight i'm going to fold the other one good and then once it's folded down you just grab it and crimp it you can see how that's crimped right in there it's just holding that in same thing for this right here crimp that down crimp that down and then just press down and then you could test it by pulling it like we've done in the past that's not moving anywhere and then there's that one last middle one right there it needs to get crimped down crimp that down crimp that down and we're done with this. Now all you have to do is slide the rubber stopper right here, just like that, slide it down right there. And this is our ground, and our ground goes to A, which is this top one here. So we just take it in the big opening, press it in, and it'll click. Right there, it clicked, and it's in. And that's how you wire these. Very simple. I'm going to go do the rest, and then let's install this. So we got our power line wired, which is B. And that just goes right in. Good. And then C. C is our ground to the switch that dims at 50%. I'm not using it right now, but just because we're doing this, I'm going to put it in. I might use it in the future. Good. All the wires are in. Now we just crimp this on. It clicks in, and our wiring harness is done. Okay, so we have both our wiring looms all set up. Now I'm going to crimp both of these red power wires to the same connector since they both need to go to the relay. I'm going to just get both strands. I'm going to kind of twist them together a little bit. 
I'm going to force both strands in here all the way. You can see they both go all the way in. And now I'm going to crimp this. Crimp it nice and hard. Test it. Good. So now both of these are together. And this is going to our relay. Now we want to get both of our big grounds. Not the little ground that dims at 50%, our big grounds. So we're going to connect them together as well. We're going to get an eyelet here. Force that in. Just like we did the, uh, the power lines. And then we're going to crimp this down. Good. Test them. Excellent. Now let's go wire this up. So I got the lights snugged down pretty tight to where I want them to be right now. Here's our switch that we made. Here's the factory wiring harness. So just get your connector, get it in there. And then once it's all the way in, that'll click and then that's done. Now we're at the other light. We're going to get the connector here. Do the same exact thing. And then it clicks right in like that. And now let's go wire our ground and our power to the relay. We're going to just take our ground and ground it to the same bolt that we grounded it to before. It's our common ground. So everything is connected right there. I'm going to try to keep these wires hidden, so I'm going to just turn them. Snug that ground down. With the ground snug down, we got one last thing to do. And we have our power line right here that goes to both of our lights. And we just connect that, in this case, to number 87. But normally you connect it to number 30. But I'm just going to follow what the relay says to do. Make sure you push that wire all the way in. Good. Now we can connect our power cable to the positive battery terminal. And this will go on just like that. Tighten this down. Now we have a nice snug fit there. We have our ground wire that goes on right there. So now the system is live. Screw on a nut here. Make sure you get that ground on there nice and tight. That should be good. That's not going anywhere. Okay, the moment of truth. I'm going to test these two Baja Design lights out before I tidy up all the wires and everything because if there's a problem, I don't want all the wires to be zip tied and have electrical tape on them. I want it to be easy just to diagnose the problem. So let's go put it in reverse. Beautiful. They work. Oh wow, they're bright. It's daytime and they're really bright. I can't wait to see this at night. I'm going to have to wait the six hours, but you won't. So in a couple of seconds, you'll get to see what this thing looks like at night. So now that everything works, real quick before I show you how it works at night, everything is connected to the relay nice and tight. The relay is in here securely. There's no wires chafing anywhere. I use some black tape here to get the grounds so that they don't move anywhere. They're nice and tight. I also zip tied the wiring harness here so it's nice and tight. So even though this relay itself is watertight, the contacts are still exposed. And I don't want anything to short out if I get some mud or water on it. I just want this to be protected. So what I did is I added dielectric grease where the wires meet the relay and just lathered it up in grease so water won't cause any problems. So we are done. Now let's go check out these lights at night. So I'm at the local park and I have my Baja Design Squadron XL lights all rigged up, ready to show you guys how it looks. So all you do, you put the car into reverse and boom. These things are super bright. So here are shots where I show you just the stock reverse light and then I'll show you the custom reverse lights. So that's how you rig up reverse lights. If you like these lights and you like the video, it gives you some good ideas, remember to give the video a thumbs up. Also if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Up on the screen are going to be a couple of videos. You click on the screen or you can find the links to those videos in the description below. Also in the description below are the links to the Chris Fix Facebook and Twitter pages. Check it out.